I made it. I apologize for being late. Uh, I'm working on some, some videos, and then I wanted to do uh, extensive notes because these are some pretty crazy stories that we're going to be discussing today, and I wanted to uh, be very careful about how I, how I discuss them. Uh, yesterday was uh, a quite, quite the shocking day of headlines, right? You were just like, oh my gosh. Uh, and it was like, it was scary from a coverage perspective to, to look at them. You were just like, oh my goodness, you know, you gotta, you gotta really do quite the balancing act trying to maneuver this minefield. Uh, and so today I feel confident to be able to do it. Uh, thank you for joining me for the live stream. Thank you for your patience. It's so nice to see all of you. Uh, also, at the last minute, I had to, uh, I don't have the, the I, I forgot where the squares are to highlight the story that we're on. So today we'll be using an arrow because uh, I got, a, I, I, at the last minute, I was like, oh no, I don't have the, the, the squares. Uh, all right, so we're going to go through some, you know, the question is, is Hollywood falling apart? Or is there a reasonable explanation to all this madness? And, you know, I think I'm going to spill, I'm going to, you know, I don't know if it's really called spilling tea, but we're going to discuss it. We're going to talk about what's, what's, what's going on. All right. Story, I mean, I think they're all very interesting. Oh, here, okay, I'll tell you some, to make up for being late, I'll tell you something interesting at the beginning before we get started, okay? So I was talking to, you know, I know a number of people in the industry and I get some really cool behind the scenes information. Thanks for gifting a membership, Stephen. And I was talking to somebody about, you know, how uh, tech has really taken over the industry. And I don't wanna get anybody in trouble, so I'll just kinda like, you know, I'll just use like just vague description. But it was fascinating to me. And they said that they'd heard somebody who had been in development uh, at or, or, or you know, at the, in doing the shows uh, behind the scenes at one of the stream, major streaming services or, you know, channels or whatever, okay? Very prestigious. And the company that owned them, a tech company, had said, right now, you're averaging 47 minutes uh, a day of viewership. Uh, that's how long people are watching the content, 47 minutes. And if you can't get that viewership a day up to 52 minutes, you're going to get fired. I don't care. They didn't care about the social uh, media footprint. They didn't care about the pop culture footprint. They didn't care about any awards that might be won. They said the most important thing was getting the minutes up from 47 to 52, not even to an hour. They're not even dealing in like half hour uh, increments, like, oh, half an hour, can you get me to an hour, an hour and a half, two hours? No, if you couldn't boost the amount of time that people were on the service by five minutes, you were not doing your job. And I thought that was just really kind of shows you where Hollywood is right now uh, and what they're prioritizing. And the reasoning was, is that by just getting those extra five minutes, you can sell more ads and you get more engagement. And I thought that was really crazy. And so I just think that it just gives you an idea of what we're dealing with right now. All right, well, with that little uh, tidbit, uh, and then of course, as always, keep your questions and comments to the story uh, at hand. I will largely be able to notice your comments and questions when I open up each section to questions and comments. And then at the very end of the video, it's of course, as always, the Ask Me Anything portion of the stream. There will be a BTT Inside Access for March. It will be for that level of membership only, and it will be at the very end of the month. Uh, all right, here we go. I didn't say who it was. Uh, I'm not getting anybody in trouble. All right, this, this, this is the stream of don't get yourself in trouble, Grace. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, okay. I heard also a rumor, I'll just spill some more tea, that Fantastic Four, you might, I think we're going to probably like get our official first looks maybe at Comic-Con, but it would be surprising to me if, they, if something didn't leak before then. In fact, the thought that it would leak, you know, this to me, that, that tea, take it with, you know, you know, that, you know, sip that tea with some skepticism, that last one, uh, because I, I feel like they're going to start filming before then. And so you know it's going to leak. 
So why wouldn't they just, I mean, you want to get out ahead of a potential leak. So I don't know if I totally agree with that. I also thought, you know, the, ex, the Fantastic Four script seemed really interesting. Uh, without giving away too much, it felt, it felt good to me. Like they were going to, from what I've heard, that they were going to try and like cover as much story as possible and really kind of give you like a big picture of the Fantastic Four all in one movie. It was a very different approach than they've taken to date. Uh, and I really liked it. I continue to hear that the movie The Comp It For, this is, I'm still spilling tea, Frankenstein RC. Uh, the movie The Comp It For is Little Women, Greta Gerwig's Little Women, you know, which is more anecdotal and, tell, and covers a tremendous amount of time. You know, it's not like, this is, we, that's right, we're pre booping here. It, it, co it covers a tremendous amount of time. And instead of just telling like one finite story, it uh, kind of gives you like, like just lets you like just experience the Fantastic Four. I think it's a really good idea. I, I like it quite a bit. Uh, again, I'm trying not to be too spoilery or get myself in trouble. Uh, okay. All right. Let's see how this arrow works. Boop. Oh my gosh, it's in the wrong place. Okay. That's because I, oh, thank you for gifting some memberships, Bay. All right. Look at the size of that arrow. You can't miss this one we're talking. We're talking about this story. All right, yesterday. I bet before yesterday, most of you didn't even know who Bo DeMeo was. And now everybody's like, what happened to Bo? All right, so Bo DeMeo is a Hollywood, he's a very interesting figure, actually. And I have to tell you, I have my X-Men 97 screeners. I got the first three episodes, and I can tweet about them at midnight. My tweet's already preloaded and ready to go. We're going to talk about OnlyFans, OK? So, all I'll say right now, well, I'll, I'll hint a little bit at the show, okay? Now that I know who Bo, Mayo, Bo DeMeo is, I infinitely understand the show better. It is very much sprung from the mind of Bo DeMeo. You know, like Athena sprung from the mind of Zeus? That's the way X-Men 97 clearly has come out of Bo DeMeo's head. I'm like, now that I see Bo DeMeo and I know a lot about him, I'm like, yeah, he totally made that show. And it's fascinating. Fascinating. This thing's going to definitely trend on social media. A thousand percent. All right, so, all right, so what happened? All right, so those of you who don't know, Bo DeMeo, yes, he's been a writer, Danny. He's written on Moon Knight. He also worked on some of the Blade scripts, none of which Marvel apparently liked. And he's written the first two seasons of X-Men 97, was going to write the third season. But then all of a sudden yesterday, they fired him. They were like, you're out. They fired him. His company shut down. He deleted all his social media accounts. And nobody knows why. I'll just tell you up front. Nobody knows why. My sources don't know why. They couldn't find out. Everybody's like, let's just move on and celebrate the show. And I have to tell you, the animation I mean, like, they have some action sequences in here. I wouldn't even call them action sequences. I would call them, like, voguing. But, like, in the best way possible. Like, they're sashaying in this show like crazy. And you're like, that's amazing. I can't believe I just saw that. All right, so there was a rumor going around that perhaps it was the OnlyFans account that he maybe at one, he definitely had at one point. But, um, you know, the thing is, so that was a rumor that was going around yesterday. And everybody was like, was that it? That's crazy. However, he's had that OnlyFans account for a really long time. And then also another fr a friend, I was, a friend I was talking to happened to point out that Florence Pugh and Emma Stone have done some nudity in movies, and yet they're very much a part of the Disney family. No problem. So it would be kind of like not cool to have poor, poor Bo DeMeo have a problem, right? I mean. Once, once Emma Stone does poor things and comes back for Cruella too, I mean, all bets are off. It, it's over. It's over. You can do whatever you want, right? I mean, I, I think, and I got to tell you, before that, my friend made that argument to me, I was like, yeah, I don't know if that mixes with Disney. Then I heard that argument, and I was like, yeah, I, I think that's the end. I mean, that, that's it. It's done. And Trisha pointed out that he didn't do, didn't do nudes on, poor, on, on, on OnlyFans. Uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, so I don't think that could be it. And especially, again, because once you see X-Men 97, I think it kind of puts some swerve. I think it puts some swerve on, uh, on the show. 
You know, again, as I told you, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, that like totally is like that fits and that's awesome. It makes me understand the show more. So I, I kind of like it. I think it works. You know, I'm like, you know what? Let's embrace it. I mean, wait till you see what Gambit's wearing on this show. It's, it's incredible. I couldn't believe, I, I couldn't believe they did it. It was hilarious. I loved it. Now, you're probably never going to know what happened. All right. I think that the only, the only difference is, is that maybe, maybe Bo DeMeo might say something. You know, like, he, that would be, I think that's the only way you're ever going to find out about this. Because, uh, but I think, I got to tell you, I think at the end of the day, everybody would just rather move forward, right? I think Bo DeMeo would probably rather just everybody go like, oh, hey, that is a cool show. You're a total fit with it. Uh, and then, you know, everybody just, and I think he'd like to probably move on with his career. So I think... You know, I mean, we'll see. We've seen some people decide to just completely blow up their own careers and any chance of re redemption in the past. But I think probably right now, I think, it's, you know, is it, SMR Goose says, is it bad for his career? That's a great question. I think that X-Men 97 is going to slap. Uh, it's not without its flaws, but I think it's going to slap. And I think that people are going to say, well, hey, Bo DeMeo very much is responsible for that. So if he doesn't say anything, he can continue to work. Somebody else maybe will pick him up. He'll get a show somewhere else, right? I mean, I think he has a very specific vibe, and I think that there are places where he would be very much at home. So that's what I think is going to happen, you know? I think everyone's just going to move on with their business, and that's what I would, be, uh, I would, I would, that's what I would support as well. So fascinating. That's very interesting. That's the situation. And... Uh, We'll see what happens, but it, it's, it is, it was certainly the story yesterday, but uh, when, when, when X-Men 97 uh, debuts a, a week from tomorrow, oh, we're going to have a really good time. Uh, all right, so, <laughs> and I really do think that this, to some ways, to some ways will still factor into the show in a positive way overall for everybody involved, including Bo DeMeo. Uh, so, and again, and again. I mean, again, I'm assuming that it's not that whatever happened was not like cancelable bad, you know, with that cravat. I, I don't know what, what happened. Honestly, I have no idea. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this story? Heinz E. Adventure says, to the non-urban or white audience, slaps means that it's a very, very, it's very, very entertaining and good. You know, I just recently picked up that lingo myself. I'm so glad to be at the forefront of the lingo of slaps. I heard somebody use it the other day, and I think, I think, was it, I forget who used it. It was like someone like Billie Eilish or someone. Someone said someone, something with slaps. And I was like, I like that. And uh, I decided to use it. Ha, ha, ha. I will be covering the X-Men, uh, at least out of the gate, weekly. I mean, if, the, if no one cares, then we won't continue to do it. But I'm certainly going to cover the first episodes. Uh, the, first, the, the, the way X-Men 97 is dropping is that it will be the first two episodes. Oh, Gramos, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. It'll be the first two episodes when the show first drops, and then it'll go to, you know, it's going to be a little bit like The Bad Batch. Sometimes it'll be one, one a week, sometimes it'll be two. It's going to go a little bit all over the place, but it will debut with two episodes. I'm glad it is. They very much fit together. Oh, Shay says, how long are the episodes? Well, I only got three of the episodes, and they're all, so far, about 30 minutes. Uh, Wiki, Wiki Nomad says, the Spider-Man animated series ended on that cliffhanger. You think if X-Men does well, could we get a sequel Spider-Man series? I never watched the animated Spider-Man. I mean, you're getting some kind of animated Spider-Man show, right? For your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, right? Eighties model says, "Do you need to watch the original cartoon to follow this?" I don't think so. Let me tell you, X Men '97 is the lightest on story. Oh yeah, I wanted to mention that. 
I think at the end of the day, there's also the issue that maybe Bo DeMeo, maybe writing isn't his strong suit. Maybe Bo DeMeo's strong suit is vibe. You know, maybe he's a visionary. You know, maybe he's someone who comes in there and he says what he thinks it should be and he comes in and he comes up with this great vibe. You know, he captures a moment, a feeling. But I don't think it's writing. You know, this is strong. That's right, SMR Goose, concept guy. Oh, Sam Levinson. He's the euphoria, right? Euphoria. Oh, my God. I might have to amend my tweet. Euphoria is a great comparison for this show. Oh, my God. I'm going to change my tweet. <laughs> That's it. That's the tweet. It's hilarious. That's it. That's all I'm saying. All right. I didn't watch Euphoria, Kay Walton, but I've seen enough memes that I've, and GIFs and clips that I feel I can get the gist of the show. All right, I think we'll move on to the next story because I'm close to getting in trouble. All right, story number two. Hold on. All right, let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go gleefully uh, run around the DC corner. Hee ha ha ha! What's happening here? It's so ridiculous. All right, boop. Okay, what's going on over here? <laughs> so yesterday, everybody was really depressed at the Batman Two, the movie that everybody actually wants to see from DC, got moved yet again. It got moved all the way back to 2026. We're all like, "Are you? You got to be shitting me, right? Like, are you kidding me with this stuff?" We were all wondering what was taking so long, and the answer is they're not making it right now. So it got delayed a year. I think the reason they delayed it a year is that they very much want uh, the, uh, the October release date, okay? That's right, uh, Mish. I do love X-Men and Batman. It's X-Men and Batman. Those are my two favorite comic book properties. Uh, all right, so anyway, uh, they want the, oh, thank you, Oralysis, for gifting a membership. Uh, I think that they want the, um, the, October the October release date. So if they can't get October 2025, they're going to do October 2026. But yeah, now we got to wait. Now, I asked around and I was like, is, is it James Gunn? I love this picture of them, by the way. So that's Matt Reeves. That's Matt Reeves. Peter Safran with the beauty shot in the middle. Look at that guy, Vogue. I love it. He looks like Patrick Bateman in that photo. He's going to slash some people's projects. And then uh, James Gunn there on the right. James Gunn and Matt Reeves, pretty much the exact same person. <laughs> Just one has a mustache. Oh, hilarious. All right. Uh, I hear very much that Peter Safran is working very much behind the scenes. He is w doing stuff. Peter Safran is involved. He is involved. Hey, Aaron, the uh, cool kid. Uh, all right. So, um... Uh, I asked around and I was like, because everybody was like, James Gunn just wants to focus on his Superman movie. Ah! It's not that. It, it just the script's not ready. The script isn't done. Uh, so that, I mean, here's it. I guess here I'll show. I'll throw a little shade. Somebody wrote during the writer's strike. Somebody didn't. <laughs> and you can decide how you feel about that. I think on the one hand you might be like, good for you not being a scab, Matt Reeves. And on the other hand, you might be like, why the heck do I got to wait so long, Matt? Everybody else was writing during the writer's strike. Why didn't you? Like, you just didn't have to pitch during the writer's strike, man. You could have written privately, right? I don't know for sure that James Gunn wrote during the writer's strike, but I mean, nothing else would explain how he was able to completely re rewrite his script in such short record time. But I will tell you something else. In, the fair, in defense of James Gunn, because I'm a fair person, Everybody wrote during the writer's strike. So in fact, Matt Reeves is the dummy because everybody was writing during the writer's strike. I know a lot of writers who freaked out halfway through the writer's strike when they discovered that every other writer was writing. They were like, that's right, I'm going to pick it. I'm not going to pick up my pen. And then, and then they were, their friends would be like, oh yeah, I'm almost done with like three scripts. So as soon as the strike is over, I can hit the ground running. And then all the other writers freaked out and were like, oh my God, I got nothing. And so everybody wrote during the, during the strike. So uh, Matt Reeves, I mean, he should have been writing, quite frankly. I mean, because now I think, I got to tell you, 
I think this is too long a break. I think this has taken a really long time to get more Batman. And who knows who might own Warner Brothers by that point. They might be like, oh, let me see. Let me see the script. Let me see it. And then they might be like, I don't like it. And Matt Reeves will be like, no, if only I'd let James Gunn be part of my universe. I mean, like, you got to be careful. Sometimes you can fidget with something too much. Sometimes you just got to strap in, baby, and go. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, who knows what Robert Pattinson's going to look like by then. He might be a full-on adult. <laughs> it's too long. Also, what about this Penguin show? Although the Penguin show, if I had somehow managed to see it, I would think was a, was, was a little bit of a, of a weird sell. Not necessarily bad, but more Sopranos than comic book show. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. But it's too long. It's too long. And I have to tell you, I think it would actually have been beneficial to James Gunn to have uh, the two things open the same summer or the same year. I think it would have been nice to have Batman and Superman because even though they're not technically part of the same universe, they look like they are. So I'd have Robert Pattinson and David Cornsweet. That's right, Ben 10. I'd have them walking around together saying, oh, hey, what's up? I'm Batman. I'm Superman. We're not in the same universe. Maybe. I don't know. But, you know, that's what I think. Corey D. Force says, is this a good thing? Could this give them some time to change Batman to the main universe if Superman does really good? I don't I mean, let's see. Let's see. I mean, they, I mean, we haven't heard anything about Brave and the Bold. That's for sure. Because, you know, the, fash, the Flash... We told him not to sign Andy Muschietti before the flash opened, but he did it anyway, and now he's stuck. What a mess. Slow down. Slow your roll, man. Slow your frickin' roll. I think that would be a, Someone should just knit a pillow for James Gunn that says slow down, you know, and stay off social media. We'll be on the flip side of the, of the pillow. Because, you know, he said he wasn't going to Comic-Con, but, like, why? Why? Why answer that tweet? Because somebody said, like, hey, dude, are you going to be at Comic-Con? And he was like, no, I'm going to be filming. And you're like, but we don't have to answer that person. Just don't answer him. Or say, I don't know, dude. I mean, plenty of creative people, especially ones who run a movie studio, can hit pause on their filming and go to California for two days and go run a panel. <laughs> it's like, no, you got, you got to stay on the Superman set. Jeremiah says, can James Gunn write Superman to be in the Reeves verse in secret? Well, I don't know. He'd have to get Matt Reeves' blessing. So, I don't know. But yeah, I just, I wouldn't, I mean, why paint yourself into a corner? And then if he does show up, everyone's going to be like, you said you weren't going to show up, man. I mean, who's going to run that meeting? Peter Safran? I give that a zero. If there is a DC panel, you will bet your bottom dollar that James Gunn is going to be sitting there because he's the space of the gun. He's, he's the, it's the gun verse. You know, he is not, you know, the whole, he very much is plastered all over that thing. And he, even more so than Feige, because James Gunn is picking up paychecks. You know, he's not a, he doesn't get, it's not a group rate for DC. He gets paid per job, which is why he's getting side-eyed from a lot of people in the industry. I have a lot of writer friends who are like, oh, so he's, he's writing that one too, huh? Another, another job for Gunn taken from a, another writer. All right. They better be good. Although I really like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and the Holiday Special. So you never know. Although he did write himself into a corner with that ridiculous thing about the Peacemaker. And he said some of the stuff's canon, some of it's not. And you're like, why are you doing this to yourself, man? Help me help you. Help me help you. Uh, all right, any questions or comments about this story? But it's just a script. Oh, that Tyler Perry comparison is pretty interesting, Eric. Not any disrespect to Tyler Perry. I think the idea is that, like, sometimes you just work too much to the point that everything just becomes a blur. Ah, uh, thanks, Linda. I am in a good mood today. Also, I have a little bit of allergies, so I'm powering through it. And I'm powering through it. I've decided to power through it with enthusiasm. So it makes me a little bit spicy and a little bit, uh, you know, a little loopy. Ah, oh, John knows my allergy pain. Oh, in Pittsburgh. Hello, fellow Pittsburghian. You guys ready for the next story? I think you're ready for the next story. They're really not... Oh, thanks, Olivier. There's really not much too much to say about this story. 
the script's not ready. It better be good. You know? That's the way uh, Yizma says it from, uh, um, I love that. Yizma from The Emperor's New Groove. I love that movie. Uh, but I love when uh, she's like, when Kronk wakes her up and she's like, this better be good. Like, that's how I feel about this Matt Reeves script. He's taken so freaking long. It better be a masterpiece. Or else we'll be like, oh, we could have well, we, we taken you a couple drafts ago. All right, third story of the day. Get ready for a tightrope act. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to do it. Scream 7. Largely because I feel that Nev Campbell is going to get in trouble. I don't think this is... Oh, yeah. Boom, baby. I don't think this is going to go the way Nev Campbell thinks it is. I think Nev Campbell is making a big mistake. I mean, I think she's going to die on the hill of a woman finally got paid what she was worth. But when you have it at the expense to some people's, uh, uh, in some people's mind, at the expense of some other women, I might cancel it out. Now, I'm not saying Scream 7 is going to be a flop. But I think that this is, okay, this is very interesting. Rarely, rarely does the fan base of something change to a very large degree. But yet that's what's happened with Scream. And it seems to me that the studio, that now the company that now makes Scream, is unaware of this. Talk about X-Men 97 and Euphoria. Scream has very much joined that group. And that group intensely supports Melissa Barrera. So that's the situation that you find yourself in. Oh, we haven't done any polls today either. That's interesting. I'll do a... Uh, um, this is a sensitive subject. We'll bring back polls tomorrow. I promise. Okay? So that's kind of the situation here. That makes this very, very unique. Okay? And I think the Melissa Barrera will haunt this franchise. Uh, I think it's going to be... They would have to get an actress of similar... From a similar group. You know, like from a show like Euphoria to maybe counteract the Melissa Barrera situation. And yet I do not feel that anyone in that group would want to go up against Melissa Barrera. Whether or not they agreed with her politically, I think out of professional respect for her in that regard, I think that's why Jenna Ortega didn't come back to some degree. I think that's kind of what's going to happen, okay? So to me, the Scream fandom has shifted. Uh, particularly for the last few movies. And that's one of the things that the latest creatives got right about it and understood. And that the franchise really shifted to being much more, the audience for Scream now is very diverse and very LGBT. Perhaps more so than any other franchise, interestingly enough. Any other movie franchise. Scream is in a very special, yes, that's right, Tillman. Also skews very young. Very, really, the Euphoria X-Men. X-Men 97, that spot, that's where Scream is now. And that audience, as I said, is extremely supportive of Melissa Barrera. So I don't, and so that you're going to lose them. You're not going to have those people probably come back. I think it's unlikely. I think that they're going to try and do, obviously, is go hardcore nostalgia. Not only bringing back Nev Campbell, but Kevin Williamson was announced to return to not only script, but direct, finally. Uh, he, of course, wrote the original movie. Future movie actor says, I wonder if Paramount tried to get them to hire Melissa back, but then Spyglass would have taken distribution away if they didn't drop it. Um, I think what's done is done, and I don't think it's going to change. Uh, I don't want to talk about the political conversation. I think it's a little bit too, you know, it, it, it is, you know, it is, let's, I'm talking about the business side. Like, where, where do we go from here, Okay. Uh, yeah, that's right, Paul Brunel, Matthew Lillard. That's who's going to make a lot of money off of this situation. I don't know if it's going to fix it, but Matthew Lillard's going to make a lot of money. Oh, do we? Do, oh, yeah, I think David, Ar I don't know about David Arquette. David Arquette, pretty plugged in. I can't see David Arquette wanting to get involved in this either. You know, uh, I think... I just don't think it's going to work out. Tyler Nakata says there is a rumor that Nev mediated a meeting between Spyglass and Melissa and that Melissa declined to return. Uh, I did not hear anything about that. I suspect that, you know, and also, 
I'll tell you right now, Melissa Barrera ain't done talking about this. You know, Melissa Barrera is not going to go away. Um, she's going to be very vocal uh, all the way through the film's probably release. So, um, now some of you are saying you wouldn't make the movie, but it's such a, a, a popular IP. I, I, don't, I don't really know if, what they would be able to do about this. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, I think, I don't think you should cancel Nev Campbell, but I just don't think, I just don't, I mean, I don't want to talk about, you know, who did what right or wrong, but I'll just tell you, I think, like, looking at this from a business perspective, I don't really see a path forward for this movie that is substantial. They might be, I mean, and also I think, I just don't know if the political discourse is going to go away. So even if somebody might say, oh, hey, I like Nev Campbell, I like uh, Matthew Lillard. I, I, I just, I think it might just be too much. And everybody might just be like, you know what? I, I don't know, thank you. So, I, I don't know. I mean, some of you say people will, will, will fold when the movie actually comes out. But I don't know. I mean, people went to see the Timothy Chalamet movies. A lot of people said that they were going to... Um, that they were going to boycott Timothy Chalamet's work, and yet they, they did not. So, Dancing Dog 60 says, total hard reboot. I'm just not sure. I think it's impossible to do a poll until you see what the movie looks like. But I think that that core audience that was really supercharging Scream, they're gonna be the hardest to win back. Usually the, hard, usually the hardcore fans are the easiest to win back, but here it'll be the casuals that will be the easiest, and then it'll be the hardcore fans. Uh, any questions about this? And I'm not going to answer all of them. Okay, Jake Van Norden says, with how good Melissa and Jenna were, I feel that we would have moved on from Nev, and nobody cares about Sydney anymore in this new story. Uh, yes and no. I think people will always care about Sydney. I mean, she's like the Indiana Jones of the horror space. Tammy says, I wish Melissa and Nev could have ended up in the same space, but I think everyone is underestimating Nev and the Scream franchise. Potentially. You know, I'm not saying the movie will bomb, but I think that it will not do as well as it would have if they could have somehow worked this out. Hey, Jonathan. David says, Melissa was always so careful with her words, yet Amy Schumer and others can say horrible things from the other perspective with no repercussions. Uh, I, I understand your frustration, David. That's all I'll say on that. Hey, Lawson, thank you for gifting five memberships. Uh, Dylan has an interesting idea of doing day and date on Paramount Plus. Could salvage viewership. That's not a bad idea. I mean, it would be quite a fall for Scream, considering where the franchise was temporarily there for a little bit. Um, but maybe that might be at least some way to save face. Tyler says, can you do a poll of people who prefer to see more, Campbell, Barrera, or Ghostface? I think that because they're, Tyler, I understand you're asking, but because there is a political, very serious element to this story, I don't think that a poll is appropriate. Hey, Danny, thanks for gifting a membership. Ben Green, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they'll settle things eventually, but um, I, I would be surprised. Subasiso says the press tour is going to be a mess or highly, highly regulated. Although that's an interesting point. Austin says, politics aside, he's just not interested in more Scream. I mean, they, I don't really know where to go from here, to be honest, either. But that's Kevin Williamson's job. That's why he's getting paid, to figure out where to go from here. I mean, I really like the last Scream. I thought it was great. All right, I think we're ready for... Oh, Ricardo says, is Courtney Cox coming back? Ooh, that's a very good question as well. 
don't know. I mean, she'd have to get paid an awful lot, I think, to come back. I, I just, I don't know if it's really worth it, considering how people feel so strongly about this. Hey, Claire. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. All right, let's move on to the next story of the day. Okay. I mean, let's move on to the Q. Oh, Finn Moreau says, a little random, but I know you share my thoughts on the importance of hair. They really need to do something about how they style Nev's hair. It didn't look good compared to her previous scream looks. The hair is always important. You got to always work on the hair. It's crucial. I, I agree. You know? Where's Nev's glow up? Where's the glow up? Although nobody, I think a lot of people just don't care. Uh, and then future movie actors holding out hope that maybe everything will work out for everyone. That would be the ideal. That would be the ideal. Uh, all right, let's go to the Q&A. All right, booyah, it's 4.57. You can ask me anything that you'd like and I might just answer it. We'll just go until 5.10. Uh, thanks, Emmanuel. Steve Quantanilla says, hey, Grace, how do you feel about the Agatha show changing its name to just Agatha? They really need to pick a name already. Uh, yeah, I think everybody's tired of it. I don't even want to hear what the title is until they release a trailer. Hulkling Loves Wiccan says, any LGBT characters in X-Men 97? Not outright from what I saw, but I feel, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Cam Creative says, did you see Sydney Sweeney's upcoming horror movie is getting very positive reviews? I gotta say, I don't like the short hair on Sydney Sweeney. I hope it was for a really good role because I don't think it works for her. Uh, glad to see Madame Webb didn't derail her career. Yeah, good for Sydney Sweeney. I think she certainly got at least a couple of movies left in her. Uh, I did not think she did a particularly good job on SNL though. Uh, let's see here. Stardust 490 says, top three Will Ferrell movies. Ah, oh, that's a hard one. Elf, obviously. Elf, um, Talladega Nights, I guess, and then maybe Anchorman. I love Will Ferrell. I think it's hard for him to do any wrong. Patrick, I'm sorry you missed the red boxes. I'll go find them. Denzel, I sure as hell am watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills tonight, and then maybe I'll stay up a little bit later to watch Amazing Race, or I'll have to wait till tomorrow. Oh, Sihar, that's so generous of you. Wow, thanks for BTT. Big Nolan fan with a question. If Nolan isn't strong with female characters and gets the Bond trilogy next, which female writer is your ideal team up with him? I think Nolan is perfect, but want to know what you think about a writer-actress collaboration. Nobody cares about the female roles in a Bond movie, which is why it's absolutely perfect for Christopher Nolan. I really, honestly, I would not bring in a female writer. I think you want to keep... The Bond has a very male vibe, and it's one of the things that makes the franchise what it is, and I would not mess with that. You know, I really, um, you know, as a woman, I am a feminist, but, you know, I like everybody's voices to be heard, and sometimes I think we have to have something that's for the male voice. And so I don't want to change everything to be like, I don't want everything to be feminist, just like I don't want everything to be, you know, uh, male-oriented. You know, I like having a, a mix. And Bond is one of those male-oriented properties. So I, I don't think Nolan needs any help with Bond. I think it's, it's his calling. It's the movie he was always meant to make after Batman. Let's see here. Danny, I'm going to try and I'm going to cover Invincible out of the gate, and we'll see if people are interested. I mean, I think it's incredible. I mean, this episode, the hits tomorrow, oh, my God. It's as good as when the first show dropped. When the show first dropped. Apricot Warrior says, Hey Grace, what would you like to see Jordan Peele tackle next genre-wise? I know we all love his work, plus love Spicy Grace. Ah, thank you. Ah, uh, I trust Jordan Peele. I loved, I loved Nope. Whatever he wants to do next, I'm excited for it. Ethan Harrell says, Do you think Batman 2 being delayed will hurt the box office? Uh, I think that it has the potential to hurt the box office, yes. I mean, on the one hand, the movie can be incredible, and then we'll be like, oh, worth the wait. But it, it better be incredible. <laughs> Giant glass in HD. Let's see. I don't know if the stream is still in HD. I mean, the camera is high quality. I think I have to figure out how to recalibrate some of this stuff. Oh, yeah, Step Brothers. Oh, I love, oh, I'm getting to the Will Ferrell movies. I love Step Brothers. Sensation says, what are your plans for St. Patrick's Day? To make movie math. 
St. Patrick's Day. I snooted. St. Patrick's Day is the Sunday, so I shall be making movie math. And then I guess in the evening, I shall watch an Irish film. I'll give you some Irish films. I'll give you two Irish films that I think are great. The, the Quiet Man. I love The Quiet Man. And then uh, there's this really famous movie. It was an Oscar-winning movie. I don't even know if it's actually Ireland, but it's Ireland adjacent. Uh, let's see here. It's the My Valley movie. How green was my valley? Is that even Ireland? No, it's Welsh. I don't know my UK region very well. I apologize because I know it's very important. But both starring Maureen O'Hara, by the way. You want to watch a good, movie on, a good movie on St. Patrick's Day? You throw a dart at Maureen O'Hara's resume. Uh, but yeah, those are two great movies. I'm probably going to maybe watch one of those on St. Patrick's Day. Tillman says, speaking of titles, Venom 3, The Last Dance. I love Venom 3, The Last Dance. It promises you that you don't have to sit through any more of these, which makes you more willing to watch it. And I think it's hilarious, and it's very 90s, which has always been the vibe of that franchise. Uh, Maya Dwee says, hey, Grace, are the rumors about the Bear Season 3 being the last true? Have you heard anything? I have not heard anything, but I actually think it's a good idea. I only heard that just from you right now. But I think it's a great idea for that to be the final season, to be honest with you. I think that that cast is getting picked up for other projects and it's going to make it harder for them to keep coming back. And I mean, how long can they work? I mean, also, people usually don't work in the restaurant industry for so long a lot of the times. But uh, I mean, how many more kitchen stories can they really tell? Uh, go out on top, baby. Uh, David Linares Plata, so nice to see you, says, hey, uh, with Dev Patel's Monkey Man getting positive reviews out of South by Southwest, do you plan on reviewing it? I sure do. I'm definitely going to review it. I don't go to the film festivals. I am independent. So I would have, not only, I don't really feel it would be a good use of my time, to be honest with you, uh, even if somebody was going to foot the bill for me to go. Uh, but uh, I, other people who go, uh, an organization pays for their travel. I have to pay for my own travel. And so I just don't, see, I just don't think there's enough of a, a reward for that investment. So that's why I don't go to Comic-Con. That's why I don't go to festivals. I, that's why I, I, I don't think that it's necessary. But I will definitely review Monkey Man. A thousand percent. I'm very excited about that movie. Hold on. Swift Deer says, how young do you think Sydney's two children should be? Scream has never had very young actors. Their children never even need to show up. Why are we putting kids in Scream? I don't want her to have any kids. I'm not, she's always calling them on the phone, being like, oh, we'll see you guys later. Jake Van Norden, I'm not giving you any X-Men 97 spoilers. I already gave you guys so much X-Men 97 information. Let's see here. David C. says, Nev is their second choice at the end of the day. If none of this happened, Jenna and Melissa were still in the film. Nev would simply get pennies. Um, you know, I mean, that's very true, David, but, you know, that is what happened. Dwight Baldwin's, oh, you guys all knew how green was my valley. All right, that's a great movie. Uh, what, uh, one day I was looking back over old Oscar winners or contenders, and I was like, I, I wanted to watch a movie I hadn't seen. And sometimes I have to go back that far to find one. And I watched that, and I was like, boy, this is a great movie. Uh, Dwight Baldwin says, have you seen the upcoming indie horror, Late Night with the Devil? I have not. I'm not a big... Oh, yeah, Irish Wish. Irish Wish comes out this weekend. I'm totally watching Irish Wish this weekend. Oh, yeah, should I watch that on St. Patrick's Day? Oh, that might be the winner. I might watch, watch Irish Wish with some other people earlier in the week, but if I don't, I will watch it for St. Patrick's Day. Although Irish Wish to me seems like more of a Friday or a Saturday movie. Perfectly West says, very graceful in your conversation. Ah, very excited to support Melissa Barrera in the future. Abigail is around the corner. That's right, Perfectly West, that movie Abigail with the little tiny ballerina vampire. Let's see how it does. That'll be a big test for Melissa Barrera. Gramo says, hi, Grace. Do you think the possible banning of TikTok will affect the advertising of TV movies, especially to the younger audience? Hmm. I don't 
don't know. I don't really like commenting on my own space, and I feel like TikTok is kind of adjacent. The real sticking point is just that the company is owned by China. It's got nothing else to do with anything else. I know there are all these conspiracy theories floating around, but I think that's just to rile people up to try and stop this from happening. If the company is sold and acquired by an American or European company that has a friendly relationship with the United States, I don't think there's going to be a problem. All right. Jeremiah, I'm so glad you're going to finish Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You won't regret it. Oh, Jonathan, getting Anna Ferris and Regina Hall for, I don't think, I got to tell you, I, I don't think either one of them wanted to be part of this. I think they're going to find that there are not a lot of people who, who want to get involved in this situation with Scream. Uh, let's see here. I don't even, I mean, most people don't even want to talk about it. Oh, let's see here. Patrick Darling says they keep changing the name of the Agatha show. Oh, we already, I already mentioned that. All right. Okay. All right. We have three more minutes. Oh, let's see here. Um, bum, bum, bum. I'm not going to review Irish Wish. No. I'll, maybe I'll tweet about it. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Not, not Modern Art History says, Shogun has been amazing. I think Shogun has been amazing, but I've never gone back after that first episode, and I even loved it. I think they have a real problem because there's never going to be any more of it. No one's talking about it because everybody's watching it at a different pace. It's a mess, as we discussed. They just totally buried that show. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aaron says, I don't know if you talked about it during the Oscar stream, but how do you feel about Angela Bassett getting an honorary Oscar? As I've said many times, it's always reminded me of what Peter O'Toole said when he got an honorary Oscar. And he said, I wish I had the chance to win it outright. And so I think it's really nice. It's better than no Oscar. It's better than no Oscar. And I think she was just so charming when she accepted it. But I'm sure she would have preferred the actual thing. And i got to tell you, I agree with Angela Bassett. She has every right to have been disappointed and to have had a reaction. She's a human being. But I think she was very gracious, and she's never complained about it. And she's just, you can't fault the woman for having a very real reaction, which is, I think, very understandable. Okay. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Ivan Sarmiento says, thoughts on the Fall Guy, good reviews. I was not excited. You were not. How could you have not been excited, Ivan? I'm so happy that the reviews were good, but I was really annoyed. I read one review. I read the Vulture review because I'm so excited about the movie. And I am so sad that I did because it spoiled so many things in the movie. I was furious. And some jerk on Twitter was like, now you know how we feel, Grace. You know, some of you have like this ridiculously low threshold for spoilers that if someone even tells you like a setup plot point, you're like, oh my God, it's ruined. Well, then you should just never read anything or hear anything before you watch the movie. That's, that means you want to go in totally, to I mean, there is no non-spoiler review that will please you because it would just be good or bad. That would, it would be a one word review. But I'm talking about reveals and jokes that were given away and I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't, if I were Universal, I'd be on the phone to the editor being like, are you, you gotta be kidding me. Why don't you just, why don't you just leak the movie? You essentially leaked it. I just couldn't believe that happened. That's how I feel about it. I am excited for Monkey Man, as I just said. Hey, Lecky. Dancing Dog 60 says, think Barbie 2 will actually happen, Grace. Yes, I do, because people like money. I'll say it now. I'll, I'm going to talk about this maybe tomorrow. I want to talk about Christopher Nolan's payday. But I will say that I think it's hilarious, and in a sad, weird way, that Christopher Nolan, st even though Barbie made more money, that Bar Margot Robbie still ended up making only 50% of what Christopher Nolan did off the two movies. Oh my God, the glass ceiling is so real. I mean, again, it's coming right out of the Barbie movie. The Barbie movie is so, so well done. 
because it so captures real life. That's what the patriarchy did. Barbie made $1.6 billion or something. It is the biggest movie of the year. It was a cultural zeitgeist. And yet Christopher Nolan still walked away with double what Margot Robbie did. And that's the patriarchy for you, man. We're still, as they said in the movie, we're, we're still doing it well. I, I know there are other circumstances that contributed to that, but it's just really amazing. It just blows your mind that that's what happened. Oh, Danielle, yeah, that's what you do? I'm glad you have a system, Danielle. Ah, uh, thank you, Mr. Magic. Staggervore, I watched a little bit of Tokyo Vice back in the day, but since nobody pays attention to it, I just don't, I never went back to it. I'm not reviewing su Feud Season 2, Jose, but thank you for asking. Greta Gerwig made much less, but Greta Gerwig just wasn't in a position to get back in. But Margot Robbie had a very attractive back end position, just like, you know, um, Christopher Nolan did. Phrasing. Let's see here. Oh, I'm over my time. Okay. Shout outs. Where are you? What are you doing? What's going on? Sensation is having some tasty pepperoni pizza as watching the stream. Danny says, watching the stream from Guatemala. Oh, hey, Danny. Brooke 50, Broke 52 says, it's my daughter Olivia's sixth birthday today. Happy birthday, Olivia. We're headed to her favorite Mexican restaurant for her birthday dinner. Mmm, delicious. Oh, fantastic. You can't go wrong with, you know, uh, my, I, it's not traditional Mexican food, but my favorite Mexican restaurant is closing. It might have already closed at downtown Disney in uh, Disneyland in California. Tortilla Joe's. Oh, that's great. Uh, let's see here. Andrew says, I love being able to spend part of my birthday with the BTT community. Ah, oh, birthday. It's like we're at a restaurant. Birthday shout outs. Uh, thank you so much for the spicy stream. My pleasure, Andrew. Happy birthday. Hello to you in Prague, Nika. Well, hey, Pastor Madeline, procrastinating making dinner. Well, David C. is at home chilling, gaming, and praying for the downfall of the Scream franchise. Uh, Adam Byer says, suffering from Panda Express hangover. I've never heard of Panda Express hangover. I can't really eat Panda Express anymore, but I think one of the funniest experiences I ever had with Panda Express is I was at LAX, uh, and I wanted, they had the honey nut shrimp back when honey walnut shrimp was a uh, special. It was not something they always had. And I remember being on the online at Panda Express on the phone with somebody. And I was like, you know how much I love uh, honey walnut shrimp from Panda Express? I'm willing to eat shrimp at the airport. And the woman in front of me actually turned around and we laughed together, even though I was on the phone. Cause it was just so true. Usually you should never eat shrimp from the airport. But it's so delicious from Panda Express. Also, back when Taco Bell briefly had shrimp tacos, I also remember eating those. And also wondering why I was crazy enough to eat shrimp from Taco Bell. I was like, I don't think Taco Bell can package shrimp. But yet there I was. Blick says, hi, Grace, your streams always give, keep me company while I work uh, 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 of your film school. I'm glad you're in film school. That's fantastic. I'll look at everybody wishing happy birthday. Ricardo is excited for Girls 5 Eva tomorrow. Love from Brian and Ricardo in Edinburgh. Hey, guys. Rashad says, back to work. I had the best time on my staycation. Ah, oh, I was wondering how your staycation went. I'm glad it was a success, Rashad. You work very hard, Rashad. You deserve it. Hazel is watching the stream while working from home. Hello. And then Joyce says, today was my first day at my new job. Ah, oh, congrats. Still a bit nervous, but powering through it. Ah, oh, don't worry, Joyce. It's good to be nervous. Nervousness keeps you on your toes. Nikki says, beautiful day in Portland. My son and I are eating chicken wings and onion rings while enjoying the stream. Hi, Nikki's son. 
Hi, what a great meal. It's so nice to see you both. Hello. Uh, Juan Hernandez says, chilling after work in San Diego. Ah, uh, thank you, Juan. The upgraded setup is amazing. Detailed view of New York behind you. Yeah, it is much clearer. It weirds even me out. When I look back at the video, I'm like, boy, that's sharp. Let's see here. I finally got a new computer. I really, I, I got like a lot of time out of the last one. Oh, Bay, I'm so sorry to hear that you have COVID and you were still so generous with the gifted uh, memberships earlier. I'm so sorry to hear that you're sick. David Q says, hello, just here responding to a complaint from the claims department uh, of insurance. Such an exciting day at work. <laughs> I'm glad, David, I'm glad, you're, I'm glad you're having fun with it. Steve Quantania says, just walking back home and about to walk my dog in, in sunny Los Angeles. I'm sure your dog can't wait. Bye, Danny. Yes, Sensation, my new computer is a Mac. I work off of a Mac. I got the MacBook Mini, and then I got the studio display. It is very beautiful, I must say. It's very pretty. Ah, oh, you're amazing too, Bay. Mika says, what's for dinner? I picked up my favorite salad for dinner. I got a really great salad. There is this place in New York City called San Ambrose. Uh, and they, it's like an Italian uh, restaurant slash cafe. And one of the things they make is this really fantastic uh, arugula and Parmesan cheese salad with a house dressing and a, like a couple of tomatoes in it. It's my favorite salad to get outside. And so I, I got it today. And I'm very excited to eat it while I watch Real Housewives. All right, everybody, I had a wonderful time talking to you. I got to get back to work. There will be a live stream tomorrow. Uh, and then also uh, some other stuff. And then we got uh, movie math. You know, it's a little, a little slow right now. But then, of course, I'm going to try and break down Invincible on uh, Thursday evening. All right, everybody, bye. Bye, bye, bye. I'm glad you guys had fun today. I had fun, too. Bye, bye.